Spicky from China. Hey, it's awesome that you're tuning in. So in this video, I want to talk about the Coal Baby. This is a seven inch double game HD connective device that you can use for playing retro emulation. And I did a lot of reviews in the past and the reason why I'm making all of these videos is simply to find the best portable device for you so you don't have to waste your money. So if you want to consider subscribing to the channel because you already missed out a lot of these devices and I can tell you sometimes we will be surprised what are we going to get. So this is more like an all one retro emulation that can play movies, you can watch ebooks, you can listen to music and this is what we're calling the Nintendo Switch ripoff because this is a new trend in China. In China they just love to rip off the Nintendo Switch because it's of course a popular product. So this is what we're going to get with the device itself. It doesn't look like the Nintendo Switch at all of course but they still try to use the colors and give you more like a Nintendo Switch idea. So if you look at the device itself it has a 7 inch diagonal screen it looks very nice we have a d-pad over here that feels quite nice and very cheap very sticky horrible analog stick Min minus and plus for volume control select start a b x y and two shoulder buttons at the back we can find a little speaker so they're always using mono speakers just i think it's more like a cost effective thing we're having tv out we're having hdmi out as you can see over here we have a usb connection for charging because this thing got an internal battery we're having a micro usb i'm guessing you will need a little converter for using a usb controller but again with these chinese you cannot use every controller we're having a tf slot for the sd card that contains the files and here we have the on and off switch for turning it on and off before we're going to take a close look at the device itself i just want to show you what comes with the device itself this one does have an extra controller and I really wanted to show you this controller because if it comes to Chinese controllers, it's so much fun. There are so really funny devices out there with very funny controllers. I have never seen something like this before. This is seriously the first one. And I must say, holding it in my hand, it doesn't feel really bad. The D-pad, yeah, that is something that's a little bit debatable. Somebody will like this, but I really hate it. It comes with an HDMI cable that is very convenient. We're having here the micro USB for charging crappy cheap headphones that will not give you a very good experience and here we have the manual that is a very thick printed yeah, and even having cube pass so that have passed the test and here you have some basic explanations this is in asian language but on the other side we're having the english so then is the question of course we have all this fancy stuff but what are we going to get with the device itself because i'm thinking this is something you want to see I did a lot of these 7 inch handheld reviews and the first thing that I'm noticing with these budget devices that it comes with a 7 inch big screen but as you can see the view angle is still very poor after all these years. So the first thing that they did improve is the little layout itself. It looks way better than the previous models. And here you can see we can choose the option for playing games, music, ebook and we're having some little settings. In the settings this is only needed if you want to use for example some changing for the power settings, language and the TV out function. At the advanced we can find some little things like effect settings as you can see we're having some weird stuff going on here but there is not really something that you can let's say install or reinstall emulators or other programs so very limited to the things you can do with it funny thing is when going to the home you can already see even improve this so the people who are watching my videos will see that there are in there are just basically having improved many new things for example the menu itself looked very fancy it's no preview a little picture but as you can see over here we have all the support of the games that are supporting we're going to try it out a little bit because i wanted to see how is the support of the games all right so the first thing that i did notice with device and that is a new common problem yes they imp improved the interface but if you're pressing the left shoulder button they basically messed it up they're still using the old crappy software so this is not very promising all right, let's see how the games are running. I'm afraid they're still using the old emulator programs that were not running very well on these devices. Ah, I found a view angle that I can record from. But as you can see, even if the view angle is pretty damn poor, it looks very nice. So, and the analog stick is mapped to the D-pad, but it's very sticky. And as you can see, it starts automatically walking. And that is something we can expect from a device like this. 
But the main problem with Mega Drive is not the emulation itself. We don't have the jump button. And there is seriously no way of mapping the button to this function. So all of these games are pretty pointless to play. It's playable, don't get me wrong, but if you can jump, you have a moment in, la in, in, in the game that you can't go any further. A little bit of a shame that they, after doing a lot of these different versions that they still didn't fix this problem. Because the emulation is not perfect, but it's also not very bad. So basically the thing can run different systems. The sound will not be perfect in many ways, but most of the games are playable and all the buttons and functionalities are here. Compared with the Sega Mega Drive, that is still lacking the jump button. And also very important, the D-pad is not bad at all and that is something that is very problematic with a lot of these systems in the past. Okay, just keep freaking, stop freaking strokes throwing your shurikens. The sound for this game is not bad. But funny thing is when you're going to play some arcade name on this device, it runs pretty good. But again, I did hear some frame drops because I kind of just hear them. But it's well playable. Alright, so we're having a 7 inch stretch image of a Game Boy Advance game. It doesn't look that great, but let's see how it plays. Let's crank up the volume. And the Game Boy Advance run pretty decent. Alright, so let's play a Game Boy Color game. That looks horrible. Nevertheless, let's play. Basically, you stab just everything. But if you listen to the sound, it's just not bad at all. And something I really didn't need to check out in this video is the HDMI output function because we are just asking for it for a very long time and as you can see it works like a charm. Alright, the only thing you needed to do is go to the setting menu, say TV out, HDMI and that's it. Alright, so let's see how the game is running. I must say the images look the image itself looks crisp and clear. It's very nice. Alright, so let's play a little bit of FBA. I can already tell you it runs like shit. As you can see, it's very choppy and they still didn't fix the old problems. Alright, so let's try this game again. Let's see how it runs in full TV out mode through the HDMI. <laughs> Looks horrible. can map it. Nevertheless, just play a little bit, just curious how this thing is even emulating the games itself. It looks very nice. Can I crank up the volume? No. Alright, so this is what you're going to get with this Nintendo Switch clone device from China, or the cool baby. Alright, so let's talk about the D-pad. So, I really love the D-pad, they finally fixed this problem, so they improved it. So I'm very happy with it. So if you look at the analog stick, it's very horrible. Uh, you can even just leave it out if you're going to use these horrible cheap China analog stick and it's even freaking stucky with this device. 
Volume control is nice that it's over here. We have a select start. Still, with the software, it's nice that they have a new layout. Okay, that it's cool, but it is still a little bit horrible that they're using the left trigger button for the return button. That is just what we call an epic fail, and with different devices they have done this. So that is something I'm thinking, why in the love of God are you still not fixing this? Or just give us an update so we can fix it. And the same goes for the Sega Mega Drive. It's a shame that it doesn't work very well, and it is missing out the input for the C button, if I'm recalling it correctly. Or in other words, the jump button. Okay, and if you look at the layout itself, it plays very nice, it's very comfortable, it's big, so for people with adult hands or big hands, it's very nice. It's got this very soft soft touch to it, I don't know what it is, it's kind of rubbery, I hope not, because these things are going to get sticky. Mono speaker, but still very loud, 8 gigs of internal storage. The screen is pretty horrible like always, but this is what you're going to get and what you can expect from a product like this. So, I want to thank you for watching, if you have any questions, you can always leave it in the comments and... Would be great if you join the family, subscribe, hit the little bell, and this basically means I will see you in the next video. Let's go.